is hot. Folks, folks, can I get everybody's attention? I, I need everybody to take a seat now, please. Everybody take a seat immediately so we can get going here. Nobody can be standing in the aisles. Everybody take a seat. so smart.
Good morning. I'm Harriet Schleifer, and I have the honor of being the chair of the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations. We gather in our nation's capital in sadness and mourning. October 7th was the darkest day in modern Israeli history. As news reports last week turned to unimaginable numbers, 1,300 dead, 4,000 wounded, almost 200 kidnapped, our shock turned to fear, anger, disbelief, and utter devastation. We mourn the loss of precious life. We pray for the healing of wounds that will never fully mend. And today, we wear these blue ribbons, an initiative started by JFNA in the hope for the safe return of our brothers and sisters now held hostage in Gaza. Our sages teach us that we should not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Instead, we're commanded always to act, always a way to shape our world, not merely be shaped by it. And today we gather together as the sages instruct to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly, and to face grief with action. And we gather in Washington to say to the world, we stand with Israel. We stand with Israel not merely with our words, but with our deeds, with action. I'm joined today by the heads of our 50 national organizations and dozens of local Jewish federations from across the country representing a broad and diverse coalition of American Jewish life. And we are eternally grateful for our elected leaders who are here this morning to share their own words of support. Our presence together in this historic synagogue in our nation's capital gives us comfort and strength. Only by working together can we ensure that Israel will have what it needs in its war with Hamas. Only by acting together can we have a safer, stronger, and better tomorrow. That belief in a better day, that hope, has carried our people for thousands of years. May it carry us through these dark days together. And now it's my honor to welcome Cantor Jeffrey Nadell to lead us in the singing of America's national anthem and Hatikva, Israel's national anthem of hope. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh, the Parts we watched were so gallantly free, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that her flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the of 
Pnima ne fechiruli o mia lufate misra kadima alinzion so. Not all pain, liot am hofshi be arzeno erestion Yerushalayim, liot am hofshi be My name is Julie Platt. I serve as the chair of the Board of Trustees of the, of the Jewish Federations of North America. Representing the 146 Jewish federations in the United States and Canada, and hundreds of smaller networked communities. I'm joined today in this sanctuary by representatives of dozens of federations who have flown in from around the country to participate in this important gathering. For more than a century, the Jewish Federation system has participated in the great cause of creating, building, growing, and protecting the state of Israel, our Jewish homeland. Through Israel's greatest triumphs and her greatest challenges, we have organized, we have mobilized, we have raised funds, and we have embraced Israel with love and solidarity. Today, in Israel's darkest hour, we are determined to work even harder and love even more deeply to help her heal and rebuild. Following last week's horrific acts of terrorism, bipartisan support for the U.S.-Israel relationship has never been more important. That is why I am especially honored to introduce our next speaker, the Senate Republican leader and a longtime advocate for his party's support of the U.S.-Israel relationship, Senator Mitch McConnell. From his service on the Appropriations Committee, where he was a leader on the programs most important to Israel, to his more than 16 years as Republican Senate leader, making him the longest serving party leader in Senate history, Senator Mitch McConnell has been deeply involved in critical pro-Israel issues. In the aftermath of the recent attacks that have once again tested the strength of Israel's people and the Jewish community across the globe, we are proud to be joined by a leader who for decades has demonstrated unwavering support for Israel during its most challenging times. Please join me in welcoming Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell. Thank you very much for coming to Washington. Like everyone here, I'm deeply saddened by the circumstances surrounding this gathering. I stand with the people of Israel in their grief and their pain as they face down existential evil. And I stand with you and with the Jewish communities around the world as you face alarming new varieties of the insidious age-old scourge 
of anti-Semitism. My message to you today is about how the United States and the entire civilized world needs to respond. We're facing a moment that demands moral clarity. This is a time for choosing, and the choice is crystal clear. We must stand with America's closest ally in the Middle East, with the people of Israel, with those held hostage by terrorists, and with their families. And we must condemn barbaric terrorists, their evil sponsors, and the legacy of hatred toward Jews that has stained world history for millennia. Today's gathering and our mission in the coming days is a powerful reminder that the burden of standing against terror, defending sovereignty, deterring authoritarian aggression, and condemning hate is not Israel's alone to bear. Israel's fight is the fight of the entire civilized world. This is America's cause, too, and it demands leadership. People with a platform need to start by establishing loud and clear who are the victims and who are the aggressors. We need to push back against the false both sides narratives you're hearing in the media. We need to denounce anti-Semitic hate wherever it occurs. And we need to show the rest of the world by our words and our actions that there simply is no moral equivalence between terrorism and self-defense. Our country needs to lead by calling on countries with relations with Hamas to push immediately and forcefully release the hostages. We need to lead countries with influence in the region to deny safe haven to those who aid and abet terrorist violence. And we need to make it clear that America, Israel, and our allies will be watching closely how they answer the call. America needs to reestablish credible deterrence against Iran. We need to show the regime that stakes its existence on pursuing the extinction, extinction of Israel and the United States that our resolve is rock solid. That means giving maximum support for Israel's counterterrorism operations for as long as it takes. It also means getting back to investing in the sort of American strength that can protect our people, equip our allies, and lead the coalition to destroy the terrorists who threaten the entire civilized world. This is what I'll be fighting for in the coming weeks as the Senate considers the resources we put into our defense and the additional assistance we need for Israel and other democracies facing authoritarian aggression from Europe to the Pacific. So as you embark on an essential mission, I want to thank you all for your leadership. May God bless you and keep you safe, and may God bless Israel and the United States of America.
Good morning. I'm Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. I want to thank Leader McConnell for his clear and unequivocal remarks in support of the State of Israel. At a time when moral clarity seems to be in short supply at many universities, in many newsrooms, in many boardrooms, let's be thankful for Speaker McConnell. Let's be thankful for the other members of Congress who are here today, for the leadership of the administration. Their presence today reminds us that America and Israel are rock solid together, and it's bipartisan. And they are rock solid together because Hamas is a hate group, a terror organization that is a product of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And as we think about the 1,400 people who were murdered, who were mutilated, the women raped, the children brutalized, some children executed in front of their parents, some parents executed in front of their children. These were barbaric atrocities. And they were committed not just against Israelis, although that would be more than enough, but also against Americans. You see, again, this isn't just Israel's fight. This is America's fight. This is the fight of the free world against terror. That's what this is actually about. And I will just say to those who have any doubt, I hope this will finally put to bed what we all know to be true. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. It's wrong and it shouldn't be tolerated anywhere under any circumstances. Now again, I wanna thank the extraordinary, unwavering leadership in Congress from both sides of the aisle who joined with us today. We're fortunate to have them and their just unflinching support. And I hope they will consider as they contemplate what they can do in this moment to support our ally, in Is our ally Israel. I hope it will include support for a new $500 million life-saving nonprofit security grant program request that can help secure the American Jewish community against the tidal wave of anti-Semitism. That's coming. And let me tell you, it's not just coming, it's here. Since the attack, since the massacre, since the slaughter, the ADL has tracked a more than 400% increase in anti-Jewish acts. I'm talking harassment, vandalism, and violence. And that's just in the first week. We know this will intensify. Our counterparts in London report a 580% increase in anti-Semitic attacks across the UK. Our counterparts in France report nearly 200 incidents in the past week alone, 65 arrests. So something isn't coming, it's already here. And my friends from Capitol Hill, you can help to protect the Jewish community. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for what we hope you will do. Now our next guest has had an exemplary career in service to the people of Israel. A veteran diplomat and peace negotiator, he was extensively involved in the development of the Abraham Accords, and today he serves as Israel's deputy ambassador to the United States. And today he's pinch hitting for our dear friend, Amb Ambassador Michael Herzog, who would have been here were it not for the fact that President Biden is preparing to depart for Israel, and so Ambassador Herzog needed to be there in advance. In this moment of crisis, in this hour of need, his voice is absolutely critical. So Mr. Deputy Ambassador, each of us here today want to express our profound shared grief with the people of Israel. All of us, all of us have family or friends colleagues, loved ones, who have been directly affected by this 
grotesque crime. And all of our hearts are scarred and broken. But equally important, as much as we are hurting, we are resolved. And we want to share with you and the nation you represent a message of strength and solidarity from the American Jewish community to the people of Eretz Israel. We, the combined leadership, stand here together with you and so with all of our brothers and sisters in Israel, and as you fight to protect the Jewish state, we will stand with you every step of the way. So friends, please join me in welcoming the Deputy Ambassador, His Excellency Eliav Ben Yamin. Thank you, Jonathan, for those warm and welcoming words. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senators, for being here. Thank you, members of Congress. Thank you, Secretary Mayorkas. Thank you, dear friends and colleagues, and brothers and sisters. I'd like to thank the Conference of Presidents for organizing this unique and united solidarity gathering together with all the partners of the leading Jewish organizations in the United States from across the country. And more than probably over 100 representatives from Jewish federations from across the country. As Jonathan said, Ambassador Herzog is on his way to, uh, to Israel as we speak to join President B uh, Biden's visit. He wishes he could have been here and he sends his heartful gratitude to all of you for your ongoing support. Ten days ago, on the morning of October 7th, 2023, 20, 2023, Hamas initiated a war against the state of Israel. This aggression marred what should have been a festive and joy joyful Simchat Torah for the Jewish people. Instead, we are confronted with the devastating reality of Hamas's unprovoked actions over 1,400 lives lost to date, more than 3,500 wounded, about 200 kidnapped, we still do not know the final numbers, and thousands of families and lives forever changed. These victims are not just statistics. They were individuals with hopes, with dreams, and aspirations taken from us in the most cruel way imaginable. The scenes, reports from image, and images from the many communities around Gaza Strip are horrifying. Victims were tortured and executed in the most gruesome ways at the hands of inhuman terrorists. Bodies mutilated, hands tied behind the victims' backs, heads decapitated, blood-soaked bedsheets, and about 200 hostages. We still don't know the exact number. And at this moment, I would like to call everyone in this room and everyone who can possibly hear to do your utmost to demand and bring about the immediate release of those kidnapped. For me, like most Israelis, we've all been personally impacted by this. My own brother lives in Nativ HaAsara, adjacent to the Erez crossing. For 12 hours, he sheltered in his safe room with his wife and his four young children without contact with the outside world. But he survived. Hamas is a barbaric terrorist organization worse than ISIS that incites violence and attacks civilians and takes its own people hostage. Since Saturday, Simchat Torah, October 7th, Hamas has fired and is continuing to fire over 6,900 rockets as of this morning into Israel, targeting homes, 
hospitals, and cities all across the country. Hamas fires these rockets from densely populated areas and buildings, including from within under schools, hospitals, and mosques, putting innocent civilians and children at risk. Israel continues to offer evacuation routes amid the consistent warnings to civilians about incoming rocket attacks. Israel is working hard to get innocent people out of harm's way, while Hamas is working hard to put people in harm's way. Hamas has been actively preventing its own population from leaving portions of the Gaza Strip. Indeed, Hamas is using its own Palestinian population as human shields. Let's be clear. Hamas terrorists are not freedom fighters who act to represent the aspirations and ambitions of the Palestinian people. Their fundamental goal is to annihilate the state of Israel and kill every Jewish man, woman, and child. My friends, Israel is at war. Israel did not choose to start this war, but Israel will end it. As we respond, the IDF, one of the world's most moral militaries, will act in accordance with international law and ethics. But make no mistake, like every other nation in the world, Israel has the right, and in fact a duty, to defend its citizens against the brutality of terrorism. We will ensure that Hamas war machine is eliminated. And to do that, we will not, and we shall, we shall not apologize. And this is a message we are sending also to any possible foe out there, or as President Biden stated as a message in one word, don't. Right now, thousands of Israelis who have lived in the communities around the Gaza Strip for decades have been displaced from their homes and can't go back. And this reality we are seeing now also in the North. In a way, they are refugees in their own land. This feeling is one that sadly my brother, family, and their friends have experienced for too many years. But the past 10 days have demonstrated the strength and resilience of Israel, of the Israeli people. In these difficult times, our unity prevails. Kol Yisrael arivim zelazeh, we have each other's backs. Much like the people of Israel, the Jewish community here in America remains united. It doesn't matter whether we are Reform, Conservative, Orthodox, religious or secular, Ashkenazi or Sfadi. This unity is a testament to the strength and the resilience of a people who have overcome adversity throughout history and are determined to prevail. Yes, there are raising, rising concerns of the security and the safety of Jewish communities also here in America. We are in close dialogue with the administration here, and I know you all are as well. And I'd like to take this opportunity and to thank Secretary Mayorkas and your team and all the law enforcement agencies and authorities across the country for doing their utmost to allow for the safety and security for the Jewish communities around the country. Thank you. As we look ahead in the coming days and weeks, the media's portrayal of this war will, and actually already is, shifting. There will be images and reports that prompt some to change the narrative and we are already seeing demonstrations, including here in Washington, D.C. It is paramount that, you, that the United States continues to support and stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel. Our two countries were founded on the bedrock of freedom and democracy with a shared commitment to oppose terrorism. 
Tomorrow, President Biden will arrive in Israel. He will be the first United States president to come to Israel during a time of war. And this sends a very crystal clear message of deterrence to the foes and support and solidarity to the people of Israel. This show of solidarity resonates deeply with myself and with the people of Israel. I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for his unequivocal and lifelong support to the country and to the state of Israel. I would also like to thank all of you for being involved in caring deeply about our state. Please continue carrying our narrative throughout the halls of government and Congress. This war is good versus evil and is a non-partisan issue. Since our independence 75 years ago, and even before, Israel and Jews have been forced to live by our sword. But we do aspire and pray for the day that the prophecy of Yeshayahu Isaiah can be realized. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Lo yisa goi el goi cherev velo yilmedu od milchama. Until that day, we must remember to stay united as we face challenges that come tomorrow. In the face of adversity, we do stand strong. Hamas underestimated us. Israel is resolute, united, and will prevail. We will emerge victorious from this war. Anachnu am echad, we are one people. Am Yisrael chai. Toda. Thank you very much, Deputy Ambassador. I'm Michael Tushin, uh, president of APAC, American Israel Public Affairs Committee. For much of our history, the Jewish people was powerless to access the halls of power. We had no voice in government. We had not even the ability to reach out to government. Thus, we celebrate people like Esther, who had access and used it. Today, we are fortunately not in that position. In fact, the leader of the Senate is one of us a Jew. For Senator Schumer, this is indeed personal. And he has often told me of his name, Schumer, the guardian, the guardian of the Jewish people. And this week, the senator has shown why he is the guardian of the Jewish people, not only speaking out forcefully about what happened, and Israel's need to dismantle Hamas and obtain the space she needs to do so, but taking a bipartisan delegation to Israel in the midst of war to show support for the U.S.-Israel relationship and that the United States will always stand with Israel. Please join me in a warm welcome for our Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you for the honor of addressing you during these terribly difficult times. I come before you and share with you a heart of grief, a hole that will really never be filled, something we will now think of every day for the rest of our lives. I come shank shaken by anger, by fear, but with a resolve to act. Am Yisroel Chai.
the people Israel live and will not be defeated. As was mentioned, I returned just yesterday after leading a bipartisan delegation to Israel, Senators Kelly and Rosen, Senators uh, Romney and Cassidy. We traveled to Israel, went into a war zone to develop a simple and unmistakable message. To, to Israel, we said, we have your back. We share your pain, we ache, but we have your back. And in the coming weeks, under my leadership, with the good support of Senator McConnell, who you heard from a few minutes ago, the United States Senate will do everything possible to help Israel win and totally eliminate the threat Hamas presents. This is a trip, as I mentioned, I'll remember for the rest of my life. A visit to the only Jewish state on earth facing the darkest hour of its 75-year history. We held a lot of productive meetings. We met with Israel's most senior leadership. But the most memorable meeting was with 12 families of hostages. Nothing prepared us for the grief we felt talking to the families. There was not a dry eye in the room on the Senate side or on their side. Looking at the little videos, a 12-year-old boy being led away, a 60-year-old elderly woman being taken, and watching their families look at them, as one of them said, every second is a year, as they sit with the agony of wondering what's happening to their loved ones. Hamas is brutal. Hamas is brutal. And being with the hostages broke our hearts. Today, unfortunately, that number of hostages keeps growing. 200, including Americans. It is of utmost importance that we bring every single one of these hostages to safety. And, and the... <laughs> And the reason I'm sort of rushing now is, in a few minutes, the five of us who traveled are getting on the phone with President Biden before he goes to Israel and talking about what we learned and what we believe and he believes needs to be done to bring the hostages home safely. There are no words for the horror that happened on October 7th. It's shaken me as it's shaken you to my core. The most Jews killed in a single day since the Holocaust. More Jews died on the 7th than on Kristallnacht, reminding us of the darker days. As the days go on, the stories of the viciousness and brutality become only more heart-wrenching. I was told about the kibbutz, Biri, where Hamas herded everyone, over 100 members of the kibbutz, into a rec room. Over 100 people, some in their 80s, some little babies, and then they machine gunned every one of them down. It reminded me of my family. We all have stories. My great-grandmother was the wife of a famous rabbi in a town called Chortkiv, now in the western Ukraine. They told all the Jews in Chortkiv to gather in the town square, and my great-grandmother, who was well-known because her late husband was well-known, was told to gather her entire family on their porch. About 35 people gathered from 88 years old to three months. The Nazis said, you're coming with us. And just like the story on the kibbutz, she said no, and they machine gunned every one of them down. So we Jews know of this type of horror, and that's why we are so resolute to make sure it doesn't happen again. 
To today, people move on fast in this new world. But for supporters of Israel, we cannot move past the horrific atrocities committed by Hamas. The world just can't move on and say, well, that was yesterday. Because if the threat that Hamas has is not eliminated, it will come back again. Let us not forget, I reminded this of when I met with Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader, a week ago. I was in China when all of this happened. And I actually got the Chinese to somewhat improve their original statement, which didn't mention Hamas. But he said, we believe in a two-state solution. And I said, yeah, but Hamas doesn't. Hamas doesn't believe there should be any Jews anywhere from the Mediterranean to the Jordan. If Hamas had its way, it would do to all the rest of the Jews in Israel what they did to the Jews along the Gaza Strip. Their covenant calls for it. We must not allow it. So America will stand with its ally Israel, and I will lead the effort in the United States Senate to, to provide Israel with the support needed to fully defend itself from this monstrous attack. We sat down with Israeli leaders. They asked us, for, we got a list of what they needed, so many things like JRAMs and more help for Iron Dome. We saw the effect of Iron Dome. You may have seen this in the news. We were having lunch at our hotel in Tel Aviv when we were rushed into a shelter because rockets that Hamas had launched from Gaza were nearby. Baruch Hashem, praise God, we're all okay. And we just had to be there, we live with the once. It actually happened again twice. Israelis live with this every day. So they need that help. I spoke with the president yesterday and there will be a significant amount of humanitarian aid. That's a good thing. To help innocent victims who have nothing to do with Hamas, Israelis and Palestinians. But we have to make sure, it's very important, that none, none of that aid ever reaches any part of Hamas. <laughs> During this difficult time, Israel will have America's support. We will not just talk, we will act. I'm not waiting for the House. We're going to move the aid through the Senate as quickly as possible, and I do believe if we get a strong bipartisan vote in the Senate, it will force the House, in whatever way they decide, <laughs> to act. It's such a difficult task Israel has. Eliminate the threat of Hamas, rescue the hostages, but because we're a democracy, believe in the rule of war and the rule of law and try to avoid unnecessary loss of human life, including innocent civilians, whether they be Palestinian or Israeli. That is such a difficult task. It is so hard to do. But I have great faith that the Israelis, if anyone can accomplish this, it is they. One more note, and our ambassador brought it up. I see our secretary here. I'm deeply concerned about the spread of anti-Semitism at this time. Some of the reactions to this terrorist attack on Israel have been appalling, shameful, anti-Semitic. I've been assured by President Biden, by Secretary Mayorkas and others, as well as local law enforcement in my home state of New York, that the entire government at this federal, state, and local levels are focused on protecting Jewish Americans from anti-Semitic attacks. And I am looking at a program I authored, the Non-Security Grant Program, to help our institutions, our religious institutions, our Jew shuls, our synagogues, our JCCs for safety. I've tripled this program over the last few years, and I will be fighting in the upcoming budget to increase it by even more. My friends, October 7th is a day that no doubt will live in infamy. My prayers 
or with all of those killed and taken hostage, their families, the thousands injured. May the memories of the dead be a blessing and a source of strength to all of us as we navigate the road ahead with a spirit and solidarity of purpose. But we know one thing, as it says in the Haggadah, in every generation they have risen to afflict us. But we know one more thing, whether it's in America or in its Eretz Yisrael, the nation of Israel lives. Am Yisroel Chai. Am Yisroel Chai. Am Yisroel Chai. Thank you, Leader Schumer, for your powerful words. Uh, good morning. My name is Ted Deutsch. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the American Jewish Committee, and it is an immense honor to be with all of you Jewish leaders from every part of the country. And before I introduce our next speaker, I want to acknowledge that there are also members of Congress from every part of the country who are committed to their Jewish communities, who are committed to Israel, who devote so much of their time to fighting these battles on behalf of the state of Israel and the U.S. House who are here with us. And I would ask them to stand so we can acknowledge their presence. I also, I, I shouldn't do this because there are others who probably deserve to be introduced, but as we have witnessed rising anti-Semitism in America and as we are now facing staggering increases in anti-Semitism in America and around the world, how blessed are we in the American Jewish community to have leading the battle against anti-Semitism our special envoy to combat anti-Semitism, Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt. Uh, now it is my honor to introduce a congressman who not only leads the legislative agenda of his party, but who is a true advocate for Israel on its brightest days and in its darkest hours. He is the top Democrat in the House of Representatives, and for more than a decade, the pro-Israel movement has been fortunate to count on Hakeem Jeffries' leadership. Hakeem and I served side by side for 10 years. He never wavered in his support for Israel. He stood strong always for the Jewish community. I traveled to Israel with Hakim and I saw him express his commitment and the way he showed his care, not just for the state of Israel and its leaders, but for the civilians we met with, the IDF soldiers we met with, every opportunity that Hakeem had to interact. He interacted with his emotions and his leadership for Israel on his sleeve. He understands that Israel, even in the wake of a tragedy unseen since the days of the Holocaust, will only grow more resilient. As Israel was facing its most perilous day, Hakeem wrote, and I quote, we will do everything necessary to support Israel's effort to defeat the Hamas terrorists and their barbarity. And as I call him up, I would just make this note, I did this job for seven terms in Congress. You accept, to my friends, you accept an invitation, you come to talk to a group visiting Washington, and you come to give a speech. This is not an invitation by a group of political activists to a leading member of Congress to talk about their issues. This is the moment when a group representing a tiny minority of the United States population comes to Washington 
because our ancestral homeland of Israel and the people of Israel are under attack by Hamas terrorists, sworn to its destruction, terrorists who are today's ISIS. And that group of proud Americans, this group here, wants its closest friends in Congress to know how deeply, how deeply grateful we are for their support. Leader Jeffries, I no longer serve beside you in Congress. Today I serve alongside this remarkable group of Jewish leaders from across America. And I join them in welcoming you as a staunch ally of our community, our powerful voice for Israel's right to defend itself, and our good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my dear personal friend, the Democratic leader of the House of Representatives, Hakeem Jeffries. Good morning. Thank you to my good friend and former colleague, Ted Deutsch, for his very kind and generous words of introduction for his leadership. I worked closely with Ted for 10 years on the Judiciary Committee, and I'm thankful that we have such a tremendous uh, leader in Ted for such a moment as difficult as this one. To all of my colleagues in the House of Representatives, to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Minority Leader McConnell, Ambassador Herzog, to Majority Leader Scalise, to Harriet, to William, Noah, who survived the horrible music festival attacks, and to all of the incredible leaders assembled. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances, but it is an honor to stand with you in solidarity today. <laughs> 10 days ago, we watched in horror and heartbreak as Hamas launched an unprovoked, calculated, and barbaric attack against the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Hamas terrorists intentionally targeted and slaughtered Israelis in their homes, fired thousands of rockets at civilian areas, decimated entire communities, including neighborhoods I have personally visited in Starot or Kafar Azah, and kidnapped women, children, young people, and seniors who are now being held in Gaza in harrowing conditions. Let me reiterate without hesitation that Hamas must be decisively defeated for the good of Israel, for the good of the Palestinian people, for the good of the region, and for the good of this world. Now since 2013, as many of you know, I've had the opportunity to represent uh, the 8th Congressional District in Brooklyn, one of the most diverse districts in America. As some of you know, as Ted knows, historically, it's the ninth most African-American district in the country and the 16th most Jewish. A good friend, Leon Goldenberg, says to me often, Hakeem, you got the best of both worlds. The best of both worlds. Now, at home in Brooklyn, I have the privilege of representing the entire landscape of the Jewish diaspora. I represent the secular Jewish community, the reformed Jewish community, the conservative Jewish community, the orthodox Jewish community, the modern orthodox Jewish community. <laughs> the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community, <laughs> and more Russian-speaking Jewish immigrants from the former Soviet Union than any other member of Congress in the country. I, I mean, Hakeem Jeffries, who knew? <laughs> Only in America. But I want to make it clear 
that I stand in support of the Jewish community that I represent in Brooklyn. I stand in support of the Jewish community in North America. I stand in support of the Jewish community in Israel. I stand in support of the Jewish community all across this world. All across this world. Now this week's Torah portion is Noah. In it, God says to Noah that the earth was filled with lawlessness. Noah was the only righteous man in the world consumed by violence, corruption, and evil. This land filled with evil was described in Hebrew as Haretz Hamas. Hamas. God and Noah had to step in to rid the land of evil that engulfed it and save the good that was left. Consequences would come to wrongdoers. This Torah portion ends with a flood that eradicates this evil and an ark that saves Noah from it. These verses remind us of the role that Israel must now play in eradicating evil. The international laws of war with respect to Palestinian civilians who have been callously put in harm's way by a terrorist regime in Gaza, of course, should and will be respected. However, this is a moment for accountability and Hamas will be washed away. Hamas will be washed away. Israel has the unequivocal right to defend itself against Hamas and all of her enemies. Indeed, Israel has the sovereign responsibility to respond to the terror, respond to the brutality, and respond to the atrocities committed against its people. Hamas attacked Israel because Hamas wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. So let me be clear. Israel has a right to exist as a Jewish and democratic state. Our commitment to Israel's security is ironclad, and the special relationship between the United States and Israel is unbreakable. Unbreakable. As we as we move forward during this challenging moment, as Israel successfully prosecutes the war against Hamas, I also reiterate my commitment to the aspirational goal of one day achieving a lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinian people. We can never, we can, we can never abandon that aspiration as it can serve as a lamppost, even in the midst of the tyranny of uncertainty. But peace will not be possible until Hamas is decisively defeated and permanently eliminated from the landscape. Over the last few days, I've spoken with many friends and community leaders in the Jewish community at home and throughout America. I know that the pain is real, and there is an understandable, visceral feeling of intense vulnerability. But I want the Jewish community to know that you are not alone. You have friends in the African American community all throughout the country, too numerous to mention, who are standing with you. The African American mayor of New York City, the largest city in America, stands with you. The only African-American governor in the nation from the neighboring state of Maryland stands with you. The African-American Secretary of State, who recently visited Israel in a show of solidarity, stands with you. And the highest ranking 
African American ever to serve in the United States Congress in the history of this great country stands with you and Israel today. You have friends in the African American community and we will stand with you and stand with Israel and crush anti-Semitism, bury it to the ground. The road ahead, as I close, will not be easy. But the state of Israel is strong, and the Jewish people are resilient. The Jewish people have been resilient for thousands of years of pain, persecution, pogroms, and the Holocaust, a uniquely horrific crime against humanity. The Jewish people were resilient during the War of Independence in 1948. The Jewish people were resilient during the Suez Conflict in 1956. The Jewish people were resilient during the Six Day War in 1967. The Jewish people were resilient during the Yom Kippur War in 1973. The Jewish people were resilient during the First Intifada. The Jewish people were resilient during the Second Intifada. The Jewish people have been resilient during multiple rounds of conflict with Hamas since 2006, and the resilience of the Jewish people will ensure that Israel will stand today, Israel will stand tomorrow, Israel will stand always and forever. God bless you, God bless Israel, God bless the United States of America. Good morning, Steve Weil, CEO of Friends of the IDF. As we sit here, 21 agricultural communities along the south have all been evacuated. Over 25 communities in the northern Galilee along the Lebanese border have been evacuated. None of us in our wildest nightmare would have ever used the term Judenrein to our precious homeland. But that's what's become of Israel. Today, Instead of young men and young women sitting in the halls of universities, engaged in high tech, acting as therapists, nurses, doctors, these young men and young women have been called up. Literally, in the course of 30 hours, the IDF tripled in size, the largest call up in the history of Israel. Today, we're speaking about a situation that is so critical that there are more active soldiers in Israel than there all are in all of the United States Armed Forces as we speak. We're in a state of crisis, an existential state of crisis. And today to address us, we welcome Congressman Steve Scalise. He's been an incredible friend of Israel from day one. He's not just a friend, he's been a leader. He's thoughtful, he's substantive, He's a man who's engaged. He's an LSU tiger. And when I say an LSU tiger, he's a tiger for ethics, for morals, and for justice. And Congressman Scalise is no stranger to terror, having been the victim of terror himself. When he was in a state in the hospital, the first world leader that reached out to him was Bibi Netanyahu. And on that phone call, they compared and contrasted their wounds. As Bibi himself in the famous raid on the, the Sabina hijacked airplane was shot as well. It's an honor for us to have a friend, a leader, and a man that we as Jews give the highest compliment we could give anyone on earth. Mitzadike umosa olam, amongst the righteous of the nations. Our LSU tiger, Steve Scalise. Thank you so much for that introduction. And for all of you welcoming 
me and for what you're doing to come together. Uh, Jewish leaders, uh, people that understand what's at stake. When I was in that hospital back in 2017 and BB called and just to show the love between our two nations, it really wasn't just about the personal connection, but the love between the United States and Israel, that bond that is inseparable. And he shared the story about losing his brother at the raid in Entebbe, but also mentioned that he was shot himself. And we shared some other stories too, and uh, always had a strong bond, but we know what's at stake right now. We know that as we look at what you represent, an incredibly diverse range of political, religious, and ideological viewpoints, today's event is an impressive signal to the world that we must all stand united in the face against terrorism. Now, let me say this clearly. Israel is at war, and America will stand united with Israel and her people's right to defend themselves from these barbaric attacks. We've seen the numbers. Over 1,400 people barbarically murdered, thousands more injured, hostages being held in Gaza. Americans included in those numbers. I've had some of my own colleagues going over to Israel just last week to help get people out. We all know people that are trying to help evacuate people. We've seen over 6,000 rockets fired at Israel. This war will not be easy. The Iran-backed Hamas terrorists who committed these atrocities spent not just weeks, but probably years planning this attack. Their attack struck deliberately at the most vulnerable, young people at a music festival, elderly people, children, reports of beheadings, disabled. Israel holds itself to a higher standard. There can be no equivalence between the pure evil of Hamas and Israel's effort to defend itself against terror. <laughs> These terrorists must be eradicated and their Iranian backed backers must be punished as well. Now clearly in the House we're working to get the House back opened, but as the Majority Leader I have been working with leaders in the House for over a week now in a bipartisan way, Chairman McCall and Ranking Member Meeks have worked together on a legislative package that when we get the House back open, the first order of business will be a strong legislative action with over 400 co-sponsors, bipartisan, expressing our strong support of Israel and its right to defend themselves in this war. It unequivocally condemns Hamas and its Iranian backers. We currently have 423 out of 434 members of Congress signed on in an amazing bipartisan show of support, a piece of legislation we will pass this week and show the world where we stand. We're also working with the Israeli government and this Biden administration to prepare military assistance so that we can replenish the Iron Dome and other critical military needs. We will be there for Israel as we always have to make sure they have the tools they need to defend themselves as these attacks continue and as they continue to go and fight this war. We're drafting legislation. <laughs> Worked with other committee chairmen to make sure that we're drafting legislation to target Hamas. Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, and other Iranian-backed terrorists that threaten Israel. 
We will crack down on Iran and its support for terrorism by blocking the release of the $6 billion ransom payment that is frozen right now. And we're also preparing legislation to impose stronger sanctions against Iran's oil revenue that has brought tens of billions of dollars to help finance terrorist organizations. We have to cut off their source of funding because we know Iran has been partnering with terrorist organizations for way too long, and it's been well documented what they've been doing behind the scenes and even in front of the scenes we have to continue to be aggressive against Iran as well. As we look to support Israel and confront our shared enemies, we must also look inward. The gleeful celebration of Hamas's murder of innocent Israelis and open anti-Semitism displayed over the past week in major cities and at some of our most elite universities should be a wake-up call. We must confront anti-Semitism wherever it is found and the leaders of major American institutions must also stand up to defend the values they support, supposedly claim to cherish. Anti-Semitism lurks its head wherever it's allowed. We cannot allow anti-Semitism to emerge in the depths of this. Since Israel's founding, America has proudly been not just the first nation to recognize Israel, but we have always stood by the promise of a Jewish state. As Israel takes the fight to these bloodthirsty terrorists, we must continue to stand with her yet again, and Israel will prevail. Thank you all. God bless the United States, and God bless Israel. I'm Rabbi Harold Kravitz, president of the conservative movement's rabbinical assembly. We pray for the captives and remember the 199 hostages held in Gaza, including American citizens. Mishaber Chavotenu Avraham, Yitzchak Viakov, Vimotenu Sarif Kara Chelvalea, Huivarech, Vishmur, Vinsur, et Kol, Achenu, Viachiotenu, and Edarim, and Itunim, Betzara, Uvishivya. May the one who blessed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah bless, watch, and guard those soldiers and citizens missing and held captive. May the Holy One of Blessing protect and grant mercy upon them. Take them out from darkness and bring them back safely to their families. And let us say, Amen. My name is Rabbi Erica Ash. I'm the president of the Central Conference of American Rabbis. A prayer for Israel. Avinu Shabbat Shemaim, Shechina Mekor Chayinu, Tzur Yisrael V'goalo, Sovereign of all the world, shield Israel beneath your protective presence. May all the inhabitants of Israel know physical safety. May they find the comfort of community as they grieve together. May they experience a renewed love for their country and its people. Guide Israel's leaders that they may act with determination and deliberation. Implant within Israel's people compassion, strength, and resolve. May they be nourished by our love and support. Natata shalom ba'aretz. We pray for shalom in the land we love. And let us say, Amen. I'm Samantha Brody from Brandeis University and the co-chair of the Hillel International Student Cabinet. 
I am joined by my co-chair, Gali Polichuk, a student at the University of Florida. A prayer for our country. O guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us all to appreciate one another and to respect the many ways that we may serve you. May our homes be saved from affliction and strife and our country be sound in body and in spirit. May we say amen. I'm Rabbi Moshe Hauer, Executive Vice President of the Orthodox Union. I have the privilege to close this prayer section by offering the prayer for the Tzahal, for the pure and virtuous army of the Israeli Defense Forces, and I will ask you to please rise for that prayer. מגבול הבנון ועד מדבר מצרים, מן הים הגדול עד לבוא הערבה ובכל מקום שהם ביבשה, באוויר ובים. ייתן אדוני את אויבינו הקמים עלינו ניגפים לפניהם. הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור ויציל את חיילינו מכל צרה וצוקה, ומכל נגע ומחלה, וישלח ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם. ידבר צוננו תחתיהם ויתרם בכתר ישועה ובעטר את ניצחון ויקוים בהם הכתוב. כי אדוני אלוהיכם ההולך עמכם להילחם לכם עם אויביכם לא אשיע אתכם ונאמר אמן. He who blessed our forefathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, may he bless the fighters of the Israel defense forces, precious and ethical soldiers who have dedicated their lives to defend and protect the innocent and who stand guard over our land and the cities of our God from the border of Lebanon to the desert of Egypt, from the great sea unto the approach of the Arava, on the land, in the air, and on the sea. May the Almighty cause our enemies, the enemies of humanity itself, who rise up against us to be struck down before them. May the Holy, Holy One, blessed be He, preserve and rescue our fighters from every trouble and distress, from every plague and illness, from every lie and defamation that a morally confused world riddled with anti-Semitism ceaselessly attaches to them. And may He send blessing and success in their every endeavor. May he humble our enemies beneath them. May he grant them salvation, crown them with victory. May they emerge from battle with their good name intact. And may the world see for once and for all the true colors of the ruthless and heartless enemy. May there be filled, fulfilled for them the verse, for it is the Lord, your God, who goes with you to battle your enemies for you to save you. Amen. Good morning. My name is David Heller. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I am the National Campaign Chair for JFNA. We're in the midst of a $500 million humanitarian aid relief raise right now. This last Saturday, or a week, 10 days ago, I received a phone call from my good friend, Carmi Stein, who's here today, that her cousin, Noah, was at the music festival. Noah has been a good friend of our family. She worked at Camp Ramada de Rome. She was my daughter, who's here today's close friend when she was in Israel. And we didn't know at that time what the whereabouts were. We've invited Noah here today. Noah's 25 years old. She is an industrial engineering student she works in the high-tech industry, and I think it's incredibly important that Noah share her story. She's accompanied also by her mother, Liat, her brother, Omer, who's gonna provide some support up here on stage, and her brother is currently serving in the IDF. It's important that we hear her story. It's important that you share her story. Noah, please come up, and I'll do with this in an interview process just to help with the story. Thank 
So Noah, if you could start by sharing with us, take us back to set, 10 days ago in the desert at 6.30 a.m. Um, it was around 6.30 a.m. I was in the tent, I was resting. We were in a festival that we were waiting for for so long. Um, we started hearing what we thought was fireworks that the music festival arranged. When I opened the tent, I realized chaos was in front of me. Hundreds of people were running towards me. When I looked up in the sky, I saw hundreds of rockets above me. And that's when I started panicking. All our friends, we were 10 friends there. We all gathered up in, right next to our tent and we split into cars to run out of there. When we got to the main road, the security told us to go only to the right. We started driving and that's when we realized that if we continue, there's a terrorist attack. We found a shelter, which was a small cement box with no door and around 30, 40 people inside. I was with, there were five friends inside, including my best friend, Norel, her sister, Roya, her boyfriend, Amit, and my other friend and their cousin, Gal. When we were there, we didn't even know that they were coming towards our shelter, but my friend texted me, they're coming, get out of there. That's when I met another girl called Michelle. She was having a pan attack, panic attack, so I helped her breathe. And I asked her her name, she said Michelle, and I said, let's sit down, there's more air if we sit down. So us four, me, Noel, Roya, and her sat down. The next thing I heard was they're coming. And that's when 30 people fell on top of me. Everyone wanted to save their life and they wanted to get to the back of the shelter. I don't remember much after that, but I remember waking up and losing contact with my friends, only wanting to hear their voice. I was laying, my head was laying on top of a chest of someone and they were breathing. That's when I asked her, what's her name? And she said, Michelle. I said, hi, it's me, it's Noah, I helped you five minutes ago. Next thing I know, they're throwing five grenades inside. Body parts are flying around. And all I hear around me is people suffocating, people on top of another. <clears throat> and a lot of shots from within. That's when I realized there's a huge body on top of me. And his head is on my throat and fire is starting in the entrance. It only came to my knowledge yesterday that the fire was actually the bodies that they burned in the entrance of the shelter. <clears throat> I breathed, I inhaled that smoke and I fought for my life for three and a half hours. I thought about my family and I had one question and it was, why do I deserve to suffocate until I die? The shots didn't stop and I lost contact with my friends and I realized I wouldn't hear from them anymore. That's when I got rescued after three hours. <clears throat> Some, some voices that I heard said that, they said, I'm going outside, I'd rather take a bullet in my head than suffocate. When once there was a little quiet, we heard them going out and then we heard shots. We realized they didn't survive. And once I got rescued, 
I reunited with Michelle in the hospital, realizing only after that she had a bullet in her back the entire time and she didn't even know. Norelle, my best friend, and her sister were American citizens. They lived in LA for nine years and they loved America. It was four days that we hadn't heard from them and we understood that it either meant that they were hostage or murdered. And in what world does a mother need to pray that her kids are hostage so that they're alive and not murdered? It's fine. I came here for the memory of my best friends and all the people that were murdered and everyone that has, has been held hostage and everyone that survived and for these soldiers and every person living in Israel. And even though that on the outside it, I don't look like I have scars and I might have only a fracture in my elbow, but the biggest scar that I have is in my soul. Then my best friends, Noel, Amit, which is her boyfriend and my dear friend and her sister, Roya, aren't here anymore. And just like my soul is aching, all of Israel is aching and their hearts are broken. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Noah, for sharing your story. Noah, the Jewish community of America is with you. The American community is with you. My friends, in every generation, we are called upon, we are called upon for action. May Noah's words today call our generation to action. Thank you very much. It's definitely hard to follow Noah's words, but I can tell you that as the daughter of two Holocaust survivors who went through the camps, who lost their entire families to Treblinka, I think my parents shared those stories from the minute I could make eye contact with them. And so they didn't have Israel at the time. They arrived in this country, the land of hope, June 7th, 1947. And when Israel took birth, that was one of the most talked about subjects in my household. They were proud American citizens, but boy were they proud that Israel took birth. So now it is my honor again to introduce our next speaker, Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. Secretary Mayorkas is a longtime friend of Israel, working closely with his counterparts there on key policy issues like cybersecurity, and most recently, leading the effort to admit Israel into the visa waiver program. He has also been at the forefront of efforts to fight anti-Semitism and violent extremism, efforts that have never been more vital in the wake of the attack on Israel, and the violent threats that have been made against Jews in the days since. Secretary Mayorkas, President Biden's powerful words in the aftermath of the October 7th attack on Israel and his upcoming trip tomorrow demonstrate America's strong commitment to Israel, and we do not take that for granted. The actions that he and you and so many of your colleagues in the administration 
have undertaken have been both a source of strength and comfort. So many of us who are deeply concerned about the safety and security of Israel. On behalf of the Conference of Presidents, we thank you and President Biden for your resolute and unwavering support for Israel and for your vigilance in the face of the threats facing our communities across the country. Please join me in welcoming Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. William Deroff, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to join our community uh, this morning. Noah, thank you for the courage of coming here and sharing um, your experience with us. The images of the, of the children, the young uh, women, the elderly, has made me think yet again about my mother and her experience in fleeing the Nazis and the lasting impact of her suffering, seeing children uh, leave home never to return, uh, impacted very much how she parented me. She kept uh, me very close. I didn't have the um, pleasure of a sleepover or a sleepaway camp as so many of my friends did. And just as the experiences of our parents, grandparents, ancestors, have had lasting impacts on successive generations, so too will the savagery inflicted on Israel and its people reverberate for decades to come and impact future generations. Acts of hate are not limited by geography nor by time. Rabbi Moshe Hauer, from whom we heard a moving prayer earlier of the Orthodox Union and I have spoken about the fact that there is no such thing is a small act of hate, a, a swastika um, graffitied on an elevator wall impacts so many more than just those who step in or off that elevator. Here in the United States, in the last week, we have seen a demonstrator wave a swastika during a rally in Times Square. Last weekend, chants of gas the Jews were heard at a rally in Sydney, Australia. British media have reported a more than 300% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in the UK alone since the Hamas attack on Israel. This against the backdrop of an already increasing wave of anti-Semitism and other streams of hate before the terrorist attacks on October 7th. Yesterday, the FBI released its annual statistical report on hate crimes. Anti-Semitic hate rose 25% from 2021 to 2022. Anti-Semitism accounted for over half of all reported religion-based hate crimes. Today, today we gather together in a highly charged environment. And I am here to implore alertness, vigilance, and preparedness. We in the Department of Homeland Security will provide flexibility in the use of the more than $156 million we've distributed to over 1,040 entities that serve the Jewish community as part of the nonprofit security grant program to meet current needs. We have our Protecting Places of Worship resource guide and our protective security advisors in every state to guide and advise the Jewish community on how to most effectively secure your facilities with the resources you have. Since last Saturday, we've held more than 60 direct community engagements to share information, distribute materials, and learn of your needs so that we can best meet them. We've reached more than 65,000 members of our community. The day after the horrific attacks on October 7th, um, Jonathan Greenblatt and the Anti-Defamation League held a gathering 
uh, virtual gathering. More than 700 people uh, participated. Uh, William Deroff, Jonathan, and I participated in, a, in an intimate discussion of what we need to do to protect our community just this past Sunday. We in the Department of Homeland Security, along with the FBI and all of our partners, are constantly evaluating the threat landscape. We remain very concerned about the lone wolf, the individual incited to violence by an ideology of hate. Use the resources, please. I implore you to use the resources we have made available to you, and importantly, work with one another. Whether it is SCAN, the Secure Community Network, or other organizations uh, and resources that are there for you. I not only implore alertness and vigilance, I implore strength. The strength to live our Jewish lives and not allow fear to prevail. We will continue to execute this administration's first ever strategy to combat anti-Semitism. We will continue the fight against hate. The extraordinary suffering that we share with our families and our friends in Israel will be lasting. The grief will not subside soon. The hurt will pass from generation to generation. So too will our, our resolve, our faith, the practice of it, and the values that we have and that bind us together. This Department of Homeland Security is here for you, and here we are here with you forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am William Deroff, the CEO of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. It is an honor to bring this remarkable solidarity fly-in to a close. For those of you who are watching at home live on C-SPAN, you'll note that many of us are wearing these blue ribbons, which our Chair Harry Schleifer mentioned before. This is a project of the Jewish Federations as a global unity symbol and solidarity with the hostages and their families, I encourage you to go to blueribbonsforisrael.org, blueribbonsforisrael.org, to order your own. For those of you who are in the room here today, we have these cards on your seats. Send love to Israel cards, which we will hand deliver to our Israeli brothers and sisters as a show of support. Please fill them out and leave them on your seat. I want to thank all of the organizations that help coordinate this event, and thank the dedicated staff who worked tirelessly over the past few days to put it together on such short notice. I want to show gratitude, hakarat hatov, to our elected officials who joined to demonstrate that support for Israel is a bipartisan consensus issue. We are all uplifted by your show of support for the entire American Jewish community and for the people of Israel. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Schumer and McConnell, leaders Scalise and Jeffries, all the other elected officials who have joined us for your leadership. Thank you, Secretary Mayorkas, for championing the protection and security of American Jews during these troubled times and throughout your career. Your tireless efforts to combat anti-Semitism, Jew hatred, and violent extremism are an inspiration to us all. And please pass along our thanks to President Biden for standing so solidly with Israel during this troubled time. I must thank Noah for your bravery in the face of true evil, for your bravery to travel here to Israel, to stand with, from Israel to stand with us today, and to show the world the strength and resilience of the Israeli people. Kol vote and thank God you are here with us.
And finally, I would be remiss if I did not thank all of you for joining us here today. We began this morning with a reminder that we gather not only to express our solidarity, but also to take action. This evening, a delegation of 50 Conference of Presidents, leaders, and Jewish Federation leaders will travel from Washington, D.C. to Israel to meet with the families of victims, wounded soldiers, and top government officials. We are flying straight from our United States Capitol to the eternal and indivisible capital of Israel and the Jewish people, Jerusalem, <laughs> to emphasize that our two countries are bound by a common purpose and a common destiny. Our mission is vital, yet straightforward. We're going to show the people of Israel that they are not alone. Jews everywhere share in their pain and stand with them. We will deliver to Israel the message of solidarity and support from our leaders that you heard today. We will ensure that both the leaders and the people of Israel understand that America stands behind them. All of America stands with them. We are all united. And in Israel's darkest hour, America's steadfast support has never been more vital. The Israeli fight to rescue its citizens and eliminate the terrorist threat posed by the Hamas terrorist army will not be easy. It will not be quick. And in the coming weeks and months, is as Israel's critics denounce its obligation to defend its people in the wake of one of the most monstrous terror attacks in history, the world's one and only Jewish state will call on its ally America for support. We will bring our experience and stories that we hear in Israel back here to Washington as a foundation of our advocacy in the weeks and months ahead. America must provide the necessary support and leadership needed to protect the people of Israel and the world from the barbarity of the Hamas terrorist army. The United States must continue to provide needed Iron Dome and military assistance and help coordinate the safe return of all hostages, including, of course, our fellow Americans. At the same time, we must protect our Jewish community here in the United States and ensure our security in the face of increased anti-Semitism. It is the most urgent challenge that many of us have faced in our lifetimes, but we will do it because we stand together. As a people, we are stronger when we are one. We are stronger when we are unified. That is how we get through dark times, together, arm in arm, feeling our way through one step at a time. The Conference of Presidents and this very room represent the full spectrum of political and religious views. But today, we stand here together as one. The Jewish people have always been the most resilient people, because in times of crisis, we manage to keep an eye on the horizon to a time in the future when it will be bright again. And so as I conclude today, I ask you all to remember with me, the Jewish people and the people of Israel together will heal and grow and emerge from these dark times even stronger and even more united than ever before. Thank you very much. God bless America. God bless the state of Israel. And now please, I welcome Cantor Jeffrey Nadell who will lead us all in singing Am Yisrael High. Cantor. Am Yisrael, Am Yisrael, Am Yisrael High. 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 Oh, the Vinu High, oh, the Vinu High. Oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu high. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel 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 high. Oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu high. Oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu, oh, the Vinu high. Thank you, Cantor. Again, God bless you all. May God protect all of us and the people of Israel. Amen. Thank you for being here.